We're here at the Stoop in Twickenham ahead of the 2010 Women's Rugby World Cup final. After 29 matches, the world's 12 best teams are down to the final two as we wait to see who will be crowned World Cup champions. England are the number one seeds going into the final. They're playing on home soil and they beat New Zealand when they played them last. But the Black Ferns have won the last three World Cups and they thrive under pressure. Will England make it their first World Cup win since 1994? Or will New Zealand hold on to the title? And the final whistle has gone. New Zealand have done it once again. They are the 2010 Women's Rugby World Cup champions. We always knew it was going to be a close match, but New Zealand edged ahead to win it 13-10. Fantastic performances by Melissa Rusko and her team. New Zealand really have been superb throughout the tournament. They haven't dropped a match and they are thoroughly deserving of the 2010 Women's Rugby World Cup title. Melissa, congratulations, a fourth consecutive World Cup win. What is the secret to your continued success? I don't know if there's much of a secret. We just get out there and, and just want to play with as much pride and passion as we can and, you know, and just the belief in ourselves and the support from home and the crowd that are here, you know, that little bit drives you over the edge. And what were your thoughts on the game overall? You know, we created pressure at times and, you know, OK, we didn't get points in the first 20 minutes. Um, got down to 13 players and we managed to score a try and I think that just lifted the girls a wee bit through to the second half and, and then, you know, you're playing a test match game like this, it, it's territory and it's basic stuff and it's ball retention and, and we did that. And at what point did you find yourselves under most pressure? Probably down to 13 players and then down to 14 players and things, you know, it, it was just really frustrating. Um, the calls went our way and then they didn't and, and we were heavily penalised and we just didn't react. What do you think the turning point was then? Not really sure. Um, I don't know if there was a turning point. I, I think that, that first 25, 30 minutes at, in the first half there, perhaps in hindsight, gave us that last five minutes, 10 minutes in there, 22, just to keep them down there. And apart from the obvious, what was the highlight of the game for you? Oh, Carla scoring that try is always brilliant and, uh, and Kelly kicking the goals and you know, and just the, the Fords knew we had to step up and, and keep that ball and, and retain it so that we could we could have a shot. And um, I think they, they really did just battle up front with the with the English pack and, and then our, our back line, they might not be big, but they certainly stopped some of the English players running at them. Well, we spoke before the tournament and you mentioned that if you did win the World Cup, you might give Richie McCaw some pointers ahead of the Men's World Cup next year. What's your top tip for him? Oh, you know, it's just pride and passion, and the All Blacks know that. It's, it's, there's no big secret. It, it's, it's just the, you just want to do yourselves proud, and then your teammates, and then everybody else. So um, I'm sure, I'm sure the All Blacks will look at this and it'll give them a bit of motivation. And uh, we got the hoodoo off their back with the white jersey and the French, so they'll be full steam ahead. Well, you've had so much support here today and over the last three weeks, and I know everyone at home is so proud of you. So well done, congratulations! Thanks very much. Congratulations, Brian! A fourth consecutive World Cup win. What's the Black Fern secret? Um, oh, they're, they're an amazing group of people. I think first and foremost, like to coach them, it's just a pleasure. Eh? They're, they're, they work hard. They're honest. Um, they enjoy themselves. I think it's huge. It's one thing I've noticed here. We even went tense times, they're always enjoying themselves and just incredible people really. And at what point in the game did you feel into the most pressure? Uh, the whole time. Uh, yeah, it was pretty tense. Um, very frustrating to be honest. I, I felt we were quite dominant at times and just couldn't. Yeah, I mean, we'd just get penalised or sinbin or whatever, so that was really hard to get any momentum going. But I did think we were the better team. Um, and what was said at half time because the girls seemed to come back a lot stronger in the second half yeah just we just said keep doing what we're doing we felt funnily enough that we probably had them up front and keep going at them and going at them and then just wait for the time to come and strike but um couldn't quite get it together and what do you think the turning point was then uh, i think in that try when we were 13 players in the field was useful um yeah i think that that was the only try uh, that we're going to get and and we just hung on and so were you able to relax at any point in the game, confident that the game was won? Uh, not really, but like deep down I, I felt we were the better team and I suppose you just hang on to that and hope it's going to work out because we seem to have the territory, um, yeah. Well you get to relax now, congratulations once again, well done. Thanks very much. The 2010 Women's Rugby World Cup 
has produced some excellent matches and thrilling tries and provided a showcase for the very best talents in the northern and southern hemispheres. It's been broadcast live on television for the first time and had more media coverage than ever before. And after three exciting weeks, the tournament's now at its end, with New Zealand making sport in history.